be honest. Boxy we having some unbelievable war. games in Dream League. Yes. This is a Rubik versus an yes. Underlord. So, stealing Firestorm, it's pretty crazy, but let's see how things kick off. War. Let's see how EG looks to make the map look with constant aggression. Because I'm going to look I'm gonna look at them. I want to see some tri-quad lanes, constant moves around, and kill, kill, kill. Hello there. So if we get some uh, early action, here's uh, the team's smoke up. Of course, we've seen a lot of smoke shenanigans sort of around the, the portals where it seems like to set up on the high ground. Yeah, we literally had, what, two or three times the 5v5 at the level one. So it looks like EG, they're trying to get a read of the lanes immediately. They place this ward that, I think this ward is kind of similar as it always has been, where you can scout, see who's going to be positioning where. Gaming, they're being a little bit more careful. I would say for them, their lanes are a bit weaker. It's going to take some time for them to get stronger, at least this bottom lane in particular. Chen, I know Peter was talking about it on the panel. This hero, it gets unbelievably strong, but the first couple levels can be a bit weak. So I think EG, they're going to look to punish that, set themselves off to a good tempo with constant kills. And let's see how many kills they can get. Let's see if they can get that snowball rolling. And how much of a sort of a difference are we going to be feeling with Moeta? Uh, with sort of the change slash fix to the fact that you're no longer getting that the completely begins. unblocked amount of damage with the gunslinger procs of Pierce the Veil. Um, I guess we'll see. I think they definitely have a lot of damage that goes through this Pierce the Veil also, which is going to be interesting. But overall, looking at it, I'm not sure. We'll see how much it does affect it. Because this hero still, I think it's very similar of how you get to a certain point and you're going to just be killing everybody anyway, because you just do so much overwhelming damage. But yeah, I'm excited to see the Let's this matchup. Quinn on the Pango against C Smile. On the voice spirit, we very much talk, heard the panel talk up Chris on, on the voice spirit. Would you agree this is the sort of hero you like to see him on? Yeah, he's played uh, I think four or five games of it on this patch, and he's won every single one of them. He's doing various different builds too. Uh, one game I was watching, he did a Dagon build. Another game, he rushed Desolator, and then besides that, he did the uh, Echo Saber kind of build that we saw from a. I think from Thompson and from a several other players as well too. So curious to see which route he goes down. And this is an old an old classic lane, right? We used to see this one all the time before Void, Void Spirit got nerfed a lot. It's this barrier versus shield that kind of comes out constantly. And yeah, you can see gaming, they're very prepared for early rotations, for early movements. The wards are being placed on the gates, but same thing to be said. I mean, well, yeah, well, what is sort of the meta going to become around sort of planting the vision around gates? Do you have to do this? And then in that case, is it not just always going to get dewarded? You know, what, what are we going to see with kind of obs regarding the twin gates? I, I, th I think it's absolutely necessary. It's just we're going to have people moving so much and always going for constant kills and quad lanes. So I think you... Ideally, you probably just want to ward your own every single time. But isn't, isn't it always is. going to sort of be a free deal? Because you have to put it in that area, right? There's yep. no other way to get vision on that the actual portal entrance. Yeah, I've even I've actually saw some carry players even starting with Sentry, and just they de-warded it. Yeah, because they I knew mean, it was going to be there. I that's going to be the case, and that's free yeah. money, right? Yeah. So I, I who knows? Like, mm. We're gonna we're gonna learn a lot off of this tournament. Yeah, definitely going to be sort of a case of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Uh, that is but first blood top. If they can uh, take down, I mean, Picard, he's trying to stand his ground against Tofu with the help of Panda. Got him. Oh, get away with it. Very nicely done there. EG cleaning up the two kills in the safe lane. Very good lane. I think they said on the panel. They said, yeah, Pudge too. CM. One of the best lanes. Best killing lanes, that is. Yeah, definitely showing it there with that early bit of action from Evil Genius is exactly what they need. And they're going to have a good chunk of answers, at least for like the, as we see Ace. I was wondering if he is just going to go down the standard beast build, the Dominator. They have CM. They have Pudge. They got ways to insta-kill. So it's going to be interesting to see how that ends up going down. Courier. Uh, uh, He's sending the creep after it. Can't quite get it. It's so close. It's going in. It's unsuccessful on the mission. Top lane. Trying to get Picard's a little bit lower here. Tofu and, and Ace now. They, they start to step up the spam themselves. I like that they have the blood grenade. I think that's exactly what I want to see from EG on these heroes. Just they want to be getting constant kills in, these laning, in this yeah. laning phase. So blood grenade. It also got. I actually really like that they did that, where you can stack now as well too. I think we're gonna see quite a bit of those inside the laning phase, which we already were. But looking at bottom, that's a lot of denies on the Muerta. That's nine. Raccio getting quite a bit. Oh, I'll get the hook. Bit risky to push for the kill, but I mean, Picard is going to try. He's rather low himself. If he can actually get Tofu, he can't. He's going to get sent far away with the telekinesis. Another set of axes. Picard's very low himself. And now you have to be a little careful of how aggressive you go on Tofu also, because yep. he has Fairy Fire, 7 1, and he got the Healing Lotus. So it can quickly turn on to you. Picard. Careful. 
spammed incredibly low. He's got to be careful for another round of axes as well. Yeah, and even though they did get this yeah. double kill up top, I mean, look at the last hits already. True. Across the board, gaming, they're kind of crushing the lanes. Bottom. It's 14 hit last hits on the Underlord, but it's 9 to 9 still on the Muerta. She's getting that farm. And they did get both of the healing lotuses themselves. Not the start I don't think that EG wants so far, even though they've gotten the two kills. The lanes good to be looking excellent good. for gaming. And I mean, Quinn is dominating mid. 28 and 4 to 15 and 1. Oh my goodness. That is a big That deal. is... Yeah, I'm pretty much doubling the outcome uh, that, that Chris has been able to get from that mid. And this, uh, this Pango, no doubt about it. Quinn's having the start to completely ball out of control and get that sort of quick first major item timing. I mean, Void Spirit, this hero crawls now. Look at this movement speed. They just hit. <laughs> You're actually so slow. So it's going to be interesting to see how Chris does recover. I think sure. they're going to have to... We have to look to see some lanes perhaps be broken, maybe relatively early on the side of EG to try to stabilize what's going on. Already. Yeah, I mean, Quinn's, Quinn's going to hit six sort of far before Chris. Uh, and then there's going to be the opportunity for Quinn to maybe catch out Chris before he has the Astral Step ready. I want to see them check power runes for, for Chris, for sure. Yeah. I think the CM or the Disruptor, these are good heroes in order to make early moves. And I still see a lot of teams playing around the six-minute power rune to set up their set up their mid laner for success. Yeah, this is crazy. 35-6 to the 19-1. I mean, Quinn just off, off to a hot start today. Plus gaming gladiators, they've been on quite the, the streak. They look fantastic at the last major, fantastic in Dream League. And coming in so far with these lanes, first game of the Berlin Majors, looking pretty solid. It's Chris Hall, right? In particular. Something's up. Quinn's like, oh, look at him. He's like, I am he, yeah, dominating he knows. mid right he knows. now. He, he knows. He feels how well this is going. Yeah, I mean, you can tell sometimes when you're just, you're getting every single last hit, right? It's it's five minutes in, he has 36. I feel like he's actually only missed yeah. maximum I mean, I hope, four I of them. This is right. Chris does look a bit frustrated there. Yeah, something's going on with him right now. I mean, you don't really, you don't see it like this one-sided. We used to, like I was saying, we do, we used to see this matchup a lot, and Void Spirit has gotten nerfed, and Pango got kind of rebuffed. But yeah, this is a crazy start for Quinn. Oh. Hopefully, everything's all right. Yeah, I hope so. He's already, uh, uh, he's seven hundred gold ahead of him. So that's what those last hits actually reflect. That's pretty damn significant in the laning phase. They're very low here in this matchup. And he does not have a point in to simulate either, so... Tango no way out. Six, they might, he might just be able to... I mean, that's what I'm him. saying. Level 6, there's huge kill potential for Quinn. Bottom lane also, Matthew. Can he get him, away? He's body blocks as well. Celery, perfect micro to make sure the map you cannot escape the lane. And Disruptor... I mean, he can probably... Now he probably just TP's mid, and you maybe want to just help your... Help your Void Spirit, because, yeah, level 6 on Pango's been hit. you got to do something mid. You sure do. There we go. Panda making a move. Can they get a kill set up on Duraccio? He's still got a Lotus if he needs. He still has the healing Lotus. So, I don't think they're taking this man down. Oh, he gets the silence onto them as well. Mid and lane. in the mid, here we go. Six is hit. Rolling Thunder's there. He's going down. He's gone. It has not been the greatest of mid lanes here for Chris. He is having a rough start today against Quint. And uh, yeah, sure, Matthew sort of heads over, but the, the, the thing is, Gaming Gladiators themselves, they bring these two supports in, they get the kill, they get the power room control. It, it does feel like this is becoming a little bit too much for, for what EG needed to be getting done with their draft this game. This is a tough start. Tough start, and there's a ton of answers, as we've been mentioning, for Gaming Gladiators in order to play versus this draft. Like the pipes, the auras, they're going to be significant. Even It's early tellings, of course, with how the lanings phase are going, but the fact that they're winning the lanes with a Chen, sure. the fact that they're doing excellent in the top lane as well, too, versus this Pudge CM, it's going to dictate a lot, with a, a lot of what's going to be coming soon. Radiance and they punish Tofu. He's, he's tankier than he looks. Yeah, it just feels awkward as well to chase for a kill. They, they know there's a high chance there's going to be more behind him. Yep. Can't really go for those sort of moves, unfortunately. And quick efficiency plays. Tofu immediately backs up. He's going to double stack. It's old school. Well, old school. Last patch strats. Of course, still with the Beastmaster. Be able to buff up that. And the, oh, Celery. He's going to be able to snatch rune? the wisdom. I don't think there's any chance, really, of uh, EG making it over to, to take Gaming Gladiators, right? No, definitely not. Ace already grabbed it. Didn't. Oh, he did. There we go. Oh, cool. And Ace is the one who takes it, so he's probably like, I want my level 6 really early, because with 6 on Beastmaster, they can, they can even just punish, perhaps, 
onto this Pudge, even though Pakaz, he is having that really good game. It's going to be a lot up to him to dictate, I guess, this early game since the Void Spirit's super shut down. Same thing for the Underlord. So these two at least are still having these good games. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's really going to see sort of be the proof in the pudding of, of whether Pakaz is going to turn up and kill people or is he going to turn up, try and kill people and not quite do enough damage. Yep. See, uh, Quinn with another attempt in the mid, but uh, Chris, he's now got the six. So He might be zoned down. Oh, my Ooh. God. He, he's dead. He's dead. Quinn's done it again. Down on the bottom lane, Duracho is getting gone upon. They'll get the glimpse back. Nice. TP's coming in. Duracho will fall. But the question is if Matthew and Whisper can get out of this one. Tofu is going to chase down Matthew. Quinn's easily able to cut down Whisper. Telekinesis is there. Tofu is going to have this with a couple more right clicks. Panda's got to get out of there. And he will. I mean, they make a big rotation on the side of EG, but it just responded instantly from gaming. And these. I mean, Quinn just having such an unbelievable start. He's double the net worth of Chris. He's making yeah. the better. Ro I mean, he's making the rotations because he can because he gets the kills, and he even now gets the rune. I mean, he's just having like the perfect game. Can they punish him? TP's coming in. I mean, they have to. They've got to do something about this Pangalir. He's got illusion rune. He's a white. Uh, he's still fine. A devastating start. Yeah, it's gonna be Freaky. super fast defusal timing on Quinn. Scary defusal game too. Playing versus Void Spirit, playing yep. versus Underlord, playing versus Pudge. These low mana heroes. I mean, Void Spirit has a good amount of mana. But the other two side lane heroes definitely get punished heavily from this. And how the level's looking. I mean, Celery's level 5 already at this point, too, on the Chen. Things are going to accelerate quickly onto the side of EG. All the timing's being hit here very early from the side of Gaming Gladiators. See what Chris can do. Can't contest the creeps. Could be in trouble himself. In the silence. He's gonna get the help of Whisper here and hold back the, the rest of Game of Gladiators, at least with the root, but I mean you are just sort of seeing how difficult it is for Chris to make a rotation really. He, he turns up to one of these side lanes, he's the one losing all the HP. He, it's so difficult as sort of an underleveled under farm void spirit to throw your body in and do the damage to to get something out of these moves. And this will all be early before any type of auras come too. It's like as soon as he makes the next move, Celery actually is gonna have Mac in hand of God. So, the potential for these kills on the side lanes, it's gonna... Yeah, it's it feels like it's easy. all gonna be up to... It really feels like so much of it's gonna be onto Picasso and what he can do as this Pudge. Yep. Yeah. 3k lead already off of the laning phase. Pop! Can we secure the rune? Andrew, we'll have to, to pick that up. They couldn't quite hold it uh, to allow Chris to come and pick it up. And Ace is already, he's he's starting to work on that humongous stack they've got prepared. Yeah. EG, they do not have that similar kind of thing for themselves to be able to farm these stacks or anything. And Whisper, as I was mentioning, he's having that good game. But He's farming. The one scary thing about when you're having a good game on Underlord is there's a Rubik. So Rubik, if you've got this high level, you know, max Firestorm, Rubik's just going to be able to steal it as soon as he gets that level 6 as well too. And it is it is a ton of damage. And they are maybe slightly lacking a bit of disables, I guess you could say, for the Void Spirit. But he can steal them as well too. So it really feels that gaming is off to a phenomenal start and have pretty much all the answers that they're looking to build toward versus this EG draft. EG's got to start getting the ball rolling with some more kills. Because as I was mentioning also before, they don't take objectives. These heroes are killers. They're not building killers. Chris trying to go for Quinn, but the Rolling Thunder's out. Uh, another step will get him far back, but Quinn, he's going to think about chasing this. He'll back out now that the CPs are coming in. Can they punish Quinn? Not quite. Quinn, he's about going back in. He goes back up with the swashbuckle and the shield crash onto Panda. And Panda's gone. The Finished off there by the Harpy. Another kill in the mid. Now Gaming Gladiators, they can get the push going on this. Tier 1 tower in trouble. They've got easy natural push with the Chen and the Beastmaster whenever he looks to rotate. Can they look for a glimpse? Whisper's even turning up. Should be able to get Tofu. Quinn's still ready to help out. The swashbuckle and the shield crash. They'll glimpse him back. Uh -oh. I mean, they're trying to take Body down heals. this Rubik. To Tofu, he's still alive. Whisper couldn't quite kill him. Another swashbuckle across, and, and Whisper's dead. They turn up for this mid fight, but they just cannot deal with the, the fact that Game of Gladiators, they're 5k ahead. Back, back, I, I, how do you get out of this position if you're EG? It feels almost impossible. It really does. It's so early, and that's how it's feeling already. I mean, Ace, he's also just having a free game, too, at this point. He's got his Helm of, Helm of Dominator finished with Arcane Boots. He's level 10 on this Beastmaster after farming the Ancients. He's that's a full a level one. over Picasso. We've got to see what Picasso can do. This is a good gank here. They're Can they it though? The, the roar's off, uh, and TP's already coming in, so it's already getting a bit more complicated for EG, as they're not able to commit for a kill. 
And now they've got to run. Matthew's getting chased. Quinn turns up. He's got the defusal blade. Matthew's gone. The axe is nearly finishing off Chris. I mean, Quinn, if he has a swashbuckle, Chris is going to be dead. They're dying everywhere, Owen. This is brutal. Even because he's getting watched, he's likely to die too. Quinn, he's got him. Now it's stuck in the trees. He'll try his best to juke out the Rolling Thunder. He'll pop the Dismember onto Ace. But he's dead. Uh-oh. This is not the start to the tournament that EG were hoping for. Oh, I mean, it, uh, it, it was always going to be a hard matchup, right? You're turning up against Gaming Gladiators who just come off the, the back of an international win at, at the Dream League stage and, and then before so winning the Major. They're just continuing to be on the same form here. They, this was... They turned up and they just they ended up playing this tournament on maximum difficulty in this first game, EG. Oh, this was never going to be an easy opponent. Chris is here. below the supports on the side of Gaming Gladiators. He's bottom three as a Void Spirit. No way this is ever... I mean, this is almost irrecoverable when they start getting these auras. The mech is already online. They're going to start building even more of these onto perhaps the Beastmaster or something. Maybe they just go for the Chen going for it. Yeah. But everyone even is picking up a casual cloaks. Look, Tofu, he's like, yep, casual cloak. It's actually... I mean, how do you kill these heroes if you're EG? And he has Firestorm stolen. So, I mean, he could just essentially kill heroes in one type of disable with him too. Yeah, this is devastating. And they're smoking. Muerta's free farming. Everyone's free farming. Totally free game right now for gaming. A 10k lead at four, not even 14 minutes. That's insane. How do you fix this? Uh, definitely one of the biggest and earliest leads in, in terms of gold per minute between teams that we've seen in a while. And the devastating thing is, too, you've lost your Wisdom runes. So now you've got the next Wisdom rune coming up in five seconds. Gaming's making the move toward it. They need this on the Disruptor in order to get his level six. I, I and mean, he if, just if the dead shot hits him, he's not going to grab it. Ah. Oh, he does get it at He least. does get it just before the dead shot hits. He's still going to die. At least he gets the rune. He gets the rune. Yeah, it's, it's something. And at the moment, unfortunately for each, just sort of a whole lot of nothing. And Panda, he's just dying to the neutral creeps. Centaur Corsair is now online also, so these auras, this magic resist aura, it's gotten nerfed, but it's still unbelievably strong. Yeah. So besides all that, I mean, and we've seen the next build. Just like they were talking about on the panel. Duracho, he's got Mage Slayer queued up. So that punch. Needs to start getting some stuff happening pretty soon here. Here we go. They get the glimpse back on Celery. But there's no damage. Here we don't go. As indeed, and fortunately for EG, that's another two dead. Holy Panthers moly. gone. Double kill for Duracho. Oh, and this is uh, this is this feels honestly pretty over. I, I don't mean, know what it, they do. They what, they got to start. They the, really what needs to happen now for the side of EG is they got to start really grouping up and just showing up with more numbers somehow. But the thing is that gaming's just prepared every time. It feels like they always have the numbers themselves. And honestly, just at this point, even if they catch sort of game and split up, if there's even if there's only just sort of two heroes, you've got five heroes of EG going for them, there's a high chance that the two heroes will be able to keep one another alive. They've just got that much that much farm right now, Gaming Gladiators, in this advance. And they're just playing together. Four heroes playing together, Ace on his own little island, doing his own thing, farming excellently. Hey, this beast, he's level 13. He's going to hit a ridiculous timing on his Helm of Overlord. Yeah, look at the neutral farm. All those stacks that Tofu made really having a massive impact. I guess one thing, though, honestly, considering just overall how this game's gone so far, it it's definitely... You wouldn't really point to it being, like, an issue with a certain pick, really. It's just overall the, the play from Gaming Gladiators. It's like, it's, this isn't a case of, oh, the Pudge carry's bad, right? Because if you had a different carry here, I don't think anything different would be happening, Fogged, with no. how fast this is going. I mean, th the mid lane can't go this this one sided. You think right? that was sort of the, the beginning of the collapse? It game. definitely makes a huge difference. It's just, I mean, Quinn is just literally p applying pressure everywhere. He's able to react to everything the supports are having a free lane to. Yeah. Yeah, this is just devastating. Yeah, we're, 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 we're reaching that 1k a minute already, and we're just 16 minutes in. This is uh, an insane lead. Gaming Gladiators. And how do they pressure... How do they pressure lanes and towers, as we've been saying? Like, the objectives, it's just not really there, so EG... How do they find some type of kills? They're under Ward Vision. They're constantly going to be getting kept tabs of. Because has Aghanims, at the very least, but they're already right. starting to itemize to deal with it. Glimmer's done on Tofu. They're going to be getting the Mage Slayer very soon, too. So let's see if they can try to get any type of kill. Because I, I feel like the supports are just going to surpass all the cores soon. I mean, one more good fight for Gaming Gladiators, and they certainly will. This is, yeah, this is unreal. So let's see what they can get a smoke. A five-man smoke. It's needed. If this doesn't go well... We may even see the GGs being dropped. I, I think we might. It is very much in that state right now, this game. They're grouped up. They're ready. They're, they're already starting to perhaps commit for Rush. And they're going to get the information now. We'll see if they can jump anyone. They're going to go for Ace. He's got Helm of Overlord. Ready. They're not killing him. Oh, God. And now they're running. As EG, they look for the fight, but they very quickly decide that they didn't want to look for this at all. 
I they're having a split up and run. Picard gets left behind. They're all going to die. Panda as well is caught. A final ult there on the way out. Is four dead. Chris still can't find literally anything. I mean, they run into Ace, but that feels like it's like the worst target to run into. Quinn I just mean, gets a free setup. At this point, any target's a, a worse target. Right? I, I don't know who they're killing if they find any of these heroes. They're just that far ahead gaming gladiators. And they get a Roche now off the bat of everything. Quinn nearly has Aghanims. These timings are coming faster than I've... Yeah, they call yeah, it. They it's go. over. Well, welcome to the Major, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's game <laughs> one. Um, well, a rough one. A rough one.